All right, let's get on onto the agenda because I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit. I've, I've made some changes in how I want to do the agenda, and um, and I'm going to address some things as we go through this uh, in a slightly different fashion. So this will be the first day I've done this, um, but I kind of like the way that I've tweaked this to make this work for everybody, okay? So first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that you all understand that this is an interactive learning experience. This is not a how-to. Uh, a how-to we did how-tos for a few years, and um, we covered the how-tos. So today, uh, the, the current version uh, of today is, we call these, I call these an interactive learning experience. It is your opportunity to ask questions, as has already been done by Bill. Bill asked a question earlier about creating a collage. So. Um, and, and and we'll we'll address that. We'll do the best we can to address that in the time that we have available to us. Okay, um, but that's so. It is it, it is an interactive learning experience uh, where you get a chance to ask questions, and we try to address those uh, live and in person right here on uh, the webinar. Second thing is that our our purpose and our goal here is for you to strive for mastery. Um, our, our intention is for you to become a master, not just at the tool, but um, but a master at being able to get results. And that's, I'm gonna talk about that a little more in just a minute. Uh, because and, and because of that, the why becomes as important, if not more important than the how. Uh, it's easy to get the how, you can YouTube the how, but the why becomes really, really important uh, if you're going to get results. And we'll talk about results later this morning. Uh, we want you to encourage them to support each other. That's the reason why I asked a minute ago when, when, when someone asked a question, I think it was Henry asked a question about the replay. Uh, Somebody is able to, to post that. That makes it really easy. We have Rose on, she's from support. She uh, if you have those questions, just just offload those to Rose, and she'll take care of that. But we want you to we want this to be encouraging. Encouragement uh, fosters a creative environment, and then finally, have fun uh, because fun creates a vacuum that's filled by creativity. Uh, I made that up, but but it sounds really good. So, uh, but but I want you to have fun. This is supposed to be a fun experience. Uh, I take I take an hour out of my my I take several hours actually to create the webinars, but uh, I, I take an hour out of my time to do this, and I want it to be fun. You take an hour out of your day to do this, and I want you to have a good time as well. Okay, does that sound great to everybody? The next thing is this has kind of come from a concept that I that I have called the open Zoom room, where um, I, we can't do that in this webinar. I do Zoom rooms where uh, clients, customers, people are able to come in and ask any question they want to with an open mic. We can't do an open mic in a webinar. It just wouldn't make any sense to do that. So um, I, I do an open Zoom room where I invite people to come in and do that. And I like that concept. I just can't do it with the webinar webinar, but I can take the same thing. So if you have questions, feel free to ask me ahead of time or ask while we're live and on the air. Um, it, it's kind of a free form question and answer. You ask a question, I will do my best to try to answer it. I can't always do that because sometimes uh, I have some stuff in the agenda that I've got to get past first uh, because it, there's some there's some time involved in preparation for this. I counted one time uh, in order to do a typical webinar, I'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 images that have been created in preparation for the web the webinar. So uh, when I have put that much time into it, we may have to put your question off to the next week. Uh, kind of modeled after the Ask Me Anything model from back in the old Periscope days. And I believe that public problem solving is one of the best ways to do this. Uh, I do, these are live. When you see my, uh, when you see my Usine screen, uh, I, if you see me make a mistake, I made a mistake. And that live public problem solving, I think is advantageous to everybody who's on, okay? Now, let's get into the group. I wanna share, share some things with you from the group. Last week, we had some frustration. Uh, the last time that we met, I apologize, it wasn't last week, it was two weeks ago. But the last time that we met, we had um, some frustration over the Pixabay integration. And so I grabbed my phone as I was headed down the road and, um, and I posted this image. What do you mean you can't work with that image integrations? Now, somebody tell me who that is in that picture. 
I have a purpose. I have a reason behind this. Somebody tell me who that is in that picture. Because I want you to see something really cool here. That's my grandson. Everybody on this webinar can identify that as my grandson. I could have easily went and got a frustrated picture. I could have went and got a frustrated picture from Pixabay with uh, somebody who's provided a model release and all of that. But that would not have had the same impact because you already know who that is. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, using pictures from your own life and experience helps to develop a relationship um, that makes it easier for your, you to get the results that you're looking for. And I can't encourage you to do that enough. He was being a goof that day as we were sitting in McDonald's and we have this terrible storm that's rolling in. And he's expressing all of this, all, all of everything about this storm coming. And I just took one picture after another. I have a hundred pictures that I can use for all kinds of things now. I have shock and and uh, confusion and and bewilderment and frustration and all of those things. They all become beneficial. This was I, I opened up my phone. I went. I got just the perfect image for this. I'll do this. That actually, I don't like the lettering on here, uh, but that happened to be what was on the app on my phone. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Let's let's do a better job of not using the same stock images that everybody else uses, but find a way to use images from your own life because what you're doing is your your audience. You are my audience, correct? You you my audience immediately immediately identify with this being my grandson. You immediately identify with that. So it helps, it builds that bridge that I'm connecting with my audience in an interesting way. All right. So uh, image integrations, we're using somebody else's images. If I don't, and that's what I'm trying to communicate in this, I, if I want to use my images and because I think they're more powerful and I think they accomplish that bigger purpose, that's the results purpose that we're looking for. Okay. Now, having said all of that, uh, the good news is that the background erase tool has been fixed and so has, so has the API integration from Pixabay. So you can now download images from Pixabay into your uh, Usine platform and be able to use them from there. So all of that has been taken care of. Last time that we were alive, I don't know if anybody noticed this, but the background tool stopped working in the middle of my presentation. Did anybody else catch that? I had erased one background and then I went back in to do it a second time and it didn't, and, and the API notification popped up. Um, and this is the thing that I have learned. If you wanna find out if, if something's broken, uh, let me do a live webinar or let me do a live demonstration on it and it, it will expose that. That's the value that comes from this because sometimes you just have to roll with it, right? Um, but, but yes, Pete, you caught that. So um, it has now been fixed. The background tool is amazing. I think we have the best background tool integration uh, possible. Love that thing. Uh, use it all the time. It's the number one thing that I get asked to do is can you remove the background from this and put it on something else? And the answer to that question is always yes. And I'm glad to do that. So there's another question that was posted in the group. I think it's the easy, I, I agree. It's the easiest thing there is to use. Um, was this, any suggestions on how to create three-dimensional shapes like arrows and so forth? I tried inserting a smaller version inside of a darker color, but it really didn't look right. I tried to use the help thing, but nothing came up. Thanks. Now we've talked about this several times. The key here is, and, and so I've, I've created this. And I want to, I'm going to, this is what I've changed on the, um, on the agenda. When there are, when there are questions posted like that, I'm going to try to put something up that makes it easy for me to explain before we get to the canvas. So the, the, the interesting thing was we have an arrow that's already in there, which has that kind of three dimensional sort of a look. So what I did was I, I wanted you to see that there's two things that make a three dimensional image work. The first one is uh, perspective and the other one is depth of field. There is a little bit of a problem with this. That doesn't look like three-dimensional. It looks like a shadow. 
Y'all agree with that? And so I'm going to play with this for a little bit when we get to the canvas. Um, but I want you to know that we're going to talk about perspective and depth of field when we do this. Uh, the, the, we've t spent a lot of time talking about perspective the last week that we were live. The, there was a question that was asked that the answer to that question had to do with perspective. Um, this is really important. Even when you go back over here and take a look at this, you can tell that the camera angle is higher than than um, than, than Tyson's face is. So I'm shooting down at that. That perspective is important. Sometimes it's the thing you don't want to have. Sometimes it's important to have it. Um, the truth is that what I'm doing right here is I'm, I'm, I'm illustrating, and this is kind of a subtle thing, and, the, and, and that's the thing about imagery. It is supposed to be subtle, uh, is that this is, this is a five-year-old going, what do you mean you can't work without image integrations? If I took the picture at, 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 at a face-on angle, it would, it would kind of subtly communicate something different. So does that make sense? All right, so we'll play with a little bit um, being able to do uh, to do some some pretty uh, cool kind of kinds of um, three dimensional sort of images. Okay, so we'll play with that a little bit when we get to the canvas. The next question is: Is there a way to create a clickable link for a button image that is added to our design? I I, I didn't post anything else with this because I want to talk about this for a moment. Um, your images that you create in Uzine are images. That's all they are. Uh, a clickable link requires coding. And you can create a hyperlink. You can put a button. You can put multiple buttons on top of an image. And I'll talk about that when we get to the canvas. You can create multiple images or multiple button images or any other kind of image. And you can make each one of those clickable inside of an image. There's, but, but remember, that is a feature and functionality of software, not image software, but instead your PDF software or your, your Word software or whatever it is that you're using. Uh, those clickable links are not going to be able to be built in a flat software uh, that that is an image editor, but can easily be done inside of a uh, um, a WordPress platform or any one of a dozen other kinds of things that can be done. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Uh, this is this question comes up a lot, um, a lot as in I think I've seen it six or eight times, uh, and probably six times in the webinars in the last three and a half years. Um, trying to create that inside of Uzine just can't be done because it's an image software. It's not intended to be a hyperlink software. Uh, question, in Uzine, one usually creates square images. How can I make the edges round so that the image is clickable? Actually, the last time that we met, the last webinar that we did, we, we I demonstrated the crop tool. And um, and remember that it is that crop tool is your best friend. It allows you to be able to do some really cool things. Uh, this is what that crop tool looks like. Actually, I'm going to play with that image in just a little bit. But when you pull the crop tool up, you have on this side over here all of these options of being able to crop that image. And then down here, I can save it to my library as a cropped image. Um, and that creates a huge advantage for me, okay? All right. Uh, any questions about that? That crop tool, for some reason, it's, it, it's just something that people don't think about. They think about cropping a square image. They don't think about cropping an image into a circle or a shape. We'll pause for a second, give you a chance to ask questions if you have any questions. This is a good time. This is a good time to do that. Okay. This is another amazing and awesome feature that we have inside of Uzon is the ability to be able to crop that image and save it to your library. Uh, Pete says he uses it all the time. Cool, that's, a, that's, a, that's great to know, Pete, thank you. The next thing is, I know Uzine is an editor that is a Flash-based platform. Anyone here use an iPad to create a design? This iPad question got asked several times in the last couple of weeks. Um, 
And uh, I, I agree, our other crop tools are not quite as good as Uzines and they don't have the same functionality. Um, I, and I, I really like this one. The, the, this question about iPads comes up a lot and I, I'm gonna make a large, big general statement, okay? Um, and the large, big general statement is this. Yes, you can erase the rest of the background. That is that is a true fact. You can you can do anything with that cropped image because you're saving it in your library uh, that you want to do that you would typically do, and that is like erase part of the background. So, question about the iPad. This is not as much. This is I totally agree with you. This is not as much a question about flash as it is a question about touchpads. And I want to address this from a touchpad standpoint. When you look at the amount of functionality that's available in Uzion, using it on a touchpad would be virtually impossible. Th this app was not designed, this is an application, it's a web application. It was not designed as a, uh, as a device app. And so you, you limit your functionality uh, anytime that you go to that level. Uh, I, I use a mouse. If you don't use a mouse, you're still frustrating with your, your, your touchpad on your, on your, uh, on your laptop. Um, I use a mouse. I use the up and down arrow keys. Those are things that get used a lot. And um, th the ability to be able to do that The ability to be able to do that gets limited um, in on on any kind of a touch type screen. Just just keep that in mind, okay? The next thing is, um, can you explain to me how to stick a picture inside of a shape? Very common question. Uh, we have software that that enables you to do that. Mockzine, uh, other software enables you to be able to do that. But I'm going to play with that today because I think that's a fun thing to do. And I'm going to show you some tricks to doing it that will make life really, really easy. Okay. Um, like this. All right. I stuck a shape inside of an image. Show you how I did that when we get to the canvas. I think this is important. I think this is fun. This opens up all kinds of doors for you. It gives you the capabilities of doing all kinds of cool stuff. All right. Um, this is, this is a multiple step process, but I did it in about three minutes and I had a lot of fun with it. My favorite model. Okay. How many of you are currently putting images inside, of, inside of images, images inside of images? How many of you are currently doing that? When you look at my screen, you'll see that I've done that. We've done that a lot in these. Okay, um, since you all are saying that you did that, tell me how I created this. We're not talking about different programs today, Donald, we're talking about Uzine. Dave said I did it with layers. That's kind of the right answer. Nope, only inside of Uzi. Little Vet says I cropped the original image, placed the frame, and then picked the background. Um, you're backwards on that. Put a photo in the frame and then added it to the background. That could easily have been done. What I did, notice the barn wood in the background. You notice the back, the barn wood in the background. I started with that. I started with the background. Okay. This is, um, can I, can I borrow a statement? This is Bob Ross. You start with the background, you build the background first. Um, and th then I went and found a frame. As Carol is saying right now, I went and found a frame. I found a frame in the integrations. I put the frame on top of the barnwood. 
I saved it as an image. I then imported it back as an image, erased the background inside of the middle right here. All right. And then I imported the picture of my grandson and I dropped it in the background. Now I'm going to show you how uh, from a placement standpoint, how I did that, uh, that will make your life a little bit easier. Okay. This happens to all be centered, but I'll show you a way to make the placement so that it works pretty cool. All right. But this was a this was a a, a multiple step. I don't I didn't count those. What was that? Four or five steps that were involved in that. Um, but I created this background. The cool thing is I now have this background I could use for anything else. I have this I could use for anything else. Okay. All right. Um, a way to do it. There's lots of ways to accomplish that. I really wanted you all to think through the steps involved in that. Um, uh, Mike, that's what a replay is. Okay. But I wanted you to see that. This, I, I, I want to cover this one more time because I'm, I'm going someplace special with this that I'll talk about in a second. The journey. The journey from for us from, a, from an educational standpoint, and that's my responsibility at Uzine, has been we realized that the tool wasn't enough. We then taught you the four magic design elements. Uh, then we realized that that design by itself is not enough. Then we started to explore the opportunities. As we began to hit the limit of how many new things we could add to the program, uh, there, was, th there, there was a transition that had to take place. Many of you have been with us since day one. I think Gene's been on since the very first webinar I did. Um, and so you've been with us on this journey uh, down this road. And you've seen that we've made a transition the last year and a half where we begin to give you ideas. Pete, you have as well. Thank you. Uh, and, and we begin to give you ideas about how to use the, uh, the program to create a business around that or to create a program to get the kind of results that you were looking for. And, and you can see Gene post stuff that he does in the, for other people all the time in the group. And, and that's the reason why I kind of highlight those once in a while, because I think it's really important that you see that I wanted you to explore the opportunities. And then we realized this, that people don't buy designs, they buy results. And so we began to make a focus on results. Uh, I want to illustrate that for you in a visual manner. And that is, these are four hammers. All four of those hammers were intended to do, to do something different. By the way, I've used all four of those hammers. I know what they were intended for. Okay, so uh, I you could have possession of all of those four hammers and still not have a clue what to do. All right, I have a friend who's a bricklayer. That first that first hammer on the left is a bricklayer's tool, and um, it, when I try to uh, cut a brick. Uh, and how many of you knew you cut a brick with a hammer? When I try to cut a brick, I make a bunch of brick dust. He can make a perfect cut on a brick because he knows how to use the hammer. You, th that's why I say we strive for mastery. We want you to become a master of the tool because in your hands, the right tool becomes amazing. Okay? But the tool by itself will never be amazing if you're not. Did you get that? The tool won't be amazing if you're not. So very important to understand that. Understood this. And this is this is where I came to. And, and I'm writing a, 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 a um, I'm writing a course on this right now. Uh, the missing element is applied knowledge. Applied knowledge is learning that is used in various situations and contexts. We've been doing that for over 10 months in Uzine now. As we've talked about, how do we create kiss stickers? How do we create um, T-shirts? How do we create mugs? How do we create uh, taking those applied, taking those applied knowledge? Uh, I know how to use the tool. I know how to use the tool, but how do I take that tool and apply it to various situations and context? Sometimes I take apart something really simple like this because understanding how to do that, then I can apply that knowledge to various situations and context. So the thing that was missing was applied knowledge. And I, I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they said, if I have this, why would I need to do that? Well, the, 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 one of the things is this, and there's been a few people who've already talked about somebody else's software um, since we've started. This is about Uzine. It's not about anybody else's software because that's what I have. And I have taken this. I've taken this. And I'm going to teach you how to use this in various situations and context. Nobody else is doing that. 
no one else does that. There's nobody who's providing for their users uh, weekly information on how to, how to use this in a variety of situations. We've highlighted this last sentence, very or this last phrase, various situations and context, doing everything I can do to try to make that knowledge, not just how do you do this, but why do you do it so that you, when, whatever the situation is that comes up, you can say, I know how to do that. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you understand why we do what we do now? Uh, the purpose is this applied knowledge. And if you disagree with me, say so. But somewhere we've got to get to the results and the results are being able to solve in any situation or any context. In other words, sell what you got. Okay? Just sell what you got. We spent a lot of time talking about that the last time we met. This will be the last time I'll bring it up. But really, really important that you, this is the best philosophy you could have. I'm going to sell what I got. I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use it to accomplish this. Because once I have mastery, and by the way, that list of hammers right there, three of them could have cut bricks. One of them was designed to cut brick. In the hands of the right person, a brick can cut a brick. Now, there's one problem with what Sharon just said. She said, teach how to fish, etc. There's one problem with that. I live in the Southeast. It, you can teach a man, you can give a man a fish and, and you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he wants to buy a bass boat, just so you know. Thank you. At least Sharon laughed at my joke. I, I feel better now. All right. When we go into, we're going to talk about the crop tool. We're going to talk about some of these other tools that are on the sidebar here that we never got to talk about the last time. So uh, I'm ready to move on to that part of the agenda. So give me a second to change my screen and I will do that. And I'll be right back with you in just a second. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start with my screen on Facebook just to point out something to you. Do you see this new tab right here? The Create tab? You know what that Create tab is? Do you, does anybody know what that Create tab is? Let me show you what it is. I call that opportunity. That create tab is an opportunity. That create tab is an opportunity. You can you can teach other you can create pages for other people. You can create ads for other people. You can create images to put in a group. All kinds of things that you can do. This is an opportunity. Facebook added this tab just in the last few days, but it's an opportunity. I want you to see that as an opportunity. Okay. Now, how many of you get junk mail? Y'all get junk mail? Somebody tell me if you get junk mail. You have a couple of things that you can do with junk mail. You can look at it as a pain in the behind, or you can look at it as an opportunity. Completely depends on what you want to do. You can take a look at that and say, that is the suckiest looking ad I've ever seen. And you can go by there and say, hey, I could help you with your ads. They're going to pay to send that, put that stuff in your mailbox. 
you might as well help them with it. You can see it as junk mail or you can see it as an opportunity knocking in your mailbox. Right? Life is all about your perspective. I just said how you can use it as an opportunity. Uh, it, it, right here, this is an opportunity because you can help somebody with to, to develop the, the imagery for their fan page or for their ads, or you can do some other things inside of their group. Um, and you have everything. Every Gene just mentioned you have everything delivered right to your mailbox. I know where to find them. I know what their phone number is. I know what their current uh, ad ads look like. I know that they're in the business of advertising. I have tons of stuff I can do. It's an opportunity, right? I need to see it as an opportunity. Well, you have to take the bogus with the with the kid. If they if they run if they're paying to spend an ad and they have a bogus email, then they have a problem. I was amazed. I, I worked a city one time, um, and and we were focusing right here on creating Facebook pages. How many of them refused to put their address? A restaurant refused to put their address. Why? You want people to come there? They refused to put their Phone number. Why? Do you not want phone calls? It's like, come on, people. This uh, advertising is about letting people know you're there. Some crap's going to come with some good stuff. All right, enough of that. An example of what? Example of a Facebook page? Example of a Facebook ad? I mean, take a look at what Gene did the other day with the tire company, right? Take a look at what Gene did with the tire company. They had a terrible looking Facebook uh, header. Gene went in and made that beautiful looking Facebook header uh, with their newly remodeled store. It was amazing. Turn around and use that same imagery in their in their ads that they that they send out. Okay. All right. Everybody hold on for a second. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Perspective and depth of field. Now, the problem that you have with this is that this little gap right here makes it look like a shadow. Do you see the little gap that's right here? Does that make sense? This makes it look like it's been lifted up off of the surface and it leaves a shadow. I want you to imagine something with me for just a moment. All right. Imagine for just a moment that we're going to uh, make all of the edges on this square. Just keep that in mind. All of the edges on this are supposed to be square. I can come down here to shapes. And I can grab this, okay? These are not the easiest to move either, by the way. I'll make them big so I can move them. Now, I need to fill up that area right there. I may not be able to move that if I don't make it bigger. but I need to be able to cover up that corner to make it, like I said, you need to pretend that those edges are square so it makes sense, but line this up. Now, what you have to do is you have to think in terms of what's gonna be my ROI on this, all right? Yep. And, and Stefan, what I typically do is what I just did there, and that is make it larger so it's a little bit easier to move. Now, assuming that all of those edges were, were square and we had nice square corners to deal with, I can now cover that up. Now, here's the cool thing is when I duplicate this, I have it for this one right here, right? I just have to grab it. And the angle will be right. All right. Now, it starts to take on a more of a three-dimensional shape. Right? I, 
I have to have three different colors so you can kind of see what I what I did. But but it, I and assuming that I have square corners here and I don't have to deal with the rounded corner, uh, you can see how much easier it would be to create that as a three dimensional type image. And I can make this look a little bit better by bringing this all the way to the front. See? Yeah, and if I, if I, but I, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing first. All right. I'll do that. Now, if I had crisp, straight corners, I would have no trouble with this whatsoever. All right? Again, it's a matter of perspective and depth of field. But the problem was that I had those little corners in there that I had to deal with. And you can see the trouble that they create. That's the problem with creating a three-dimensional image. Now, if I'm going to create a 3D image, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm using something that has square corners on it so I can hide that easily and something that is, um, uh, that's worth the effort. Make sense? I want to make sure that it's worth the effort. Now, let's do this because I want you to see this as well. And that is, um, I want to, I'm going to change the background here. All right, I'm going to change the background here so that you can see this. And, um, and what I want to do now is my mind just went blank i'll come back to that one what i want to do now is i want to talk about this crop tool okay can you see this circle when i change that this is the shape that it is originally right so i'm gonna have to make it fit but I can crop it just like that. Now let's go over here. Let's take that and let's go over here and let's talk about this one. Okay. This is an overlay. Gene uses overlays on videos all the time. And so this is just simply an overlay. And the reason why I chose this method as opposed to cropping this image right here and laying it inside of that framework is because I wanted to talk about how do you create that overlay. So let's do this. Um, all right, let me do something first. I want to, I want to do this. All right, I now have a positioning issue. All right, because this frame's not in dead center. It was easy when I had it in dead in in, in dead center. It was easy because I could dead center my picture of Tyson. I could dead center the picture of this, and then the original came out just perfect. Right? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? But if I have an offset, but in this case, I have an offset. Let me show you a trick for being able to place that in the right spot, okay? I love using emojis for this. I'm going to make this emoji fit in the middle of this frame, 
all right are you with me i now have my emoji in the middle of the frame what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the frame out of the way and now i'm going to position my picture so that it covers the emoji move this back where i had it originally and delete the emoji does that help all right i will do it one more time because I, I really think this is pretty cool um, I, th I think this is a great uh, this is a great opportunity for you to uh, develop a, a, a kind of a specialized skill that will save you tons of time. I love to use the emojis to position things. So if I have this offset, my original, my original was, and I'll, I'll go back and I'll position it in the center like it was. Now, if I have this offset, like I just had, that doesn't fit right. Right? Y'all see that? So what I want to do is I want to leave my frame just like it is. Maybe I want to put some, maybe I want to put something down here in the corner. I want to do, a, I want to promote something down in the corner. Okay. So I'm going to, um, so I want to make sure that this doesn't get lost with that frame being in the middle, right? Y'all with me? So now I have to position this image right here in the middle of this frame. The way I do that, go over here and grab an emoji. Make that emoji the same size as the frame. You can always use your own images. Uh, that's what that image of Tyson is, is my own image. Now, I move the frame out of the way, grab this, position his face right over that emoji, grab this, and move it back into its lo original location, which is right there, and I delete the emoji. And I have it properly positioned. How cool is that? That little trick, a time saver? And as Kim said, when, when you get a bunch of images that are different size, it's really difficult to do this with. So what I'm going to do is now I take that image and I send it to the back. Take this image, send it to the back, take this image, send it to the back, and take this image and send it to the back. Now I have my grid lines are there. Right. Now, one more thing to do. That's a good question, Bill. Yes, you can add text to that. Um, and I'll show you in just a second. There's one thing that's missing from this right here, and that is I can clean that all up by going over here to my background tool, and I can pick a border that is the same color. And I can then make my border the same size as my grid lines are. Okay. Now, yeah, I could add a text on top of each one of these. Like this right here. We could do that. All right. Again, if I had known ahead of time, I probably would have created the images so that they were close to the same size and then showed how to do that. All right, everybody, it's time to go. We, Whenever Sam says it's time to go, it's time to go. So thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I agree, Rose. It's great for reaction pictures. I could have shown four different reactions there. I have, the, I have uh, dozens of them from that McDonald's, which would have been really cool. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will see you next Friday, same time, same place. And then, um, like I said, we're still leaving the following Friday kind of in the wings, but just keep that in mind, okay? All right, y'all have a wonderful and safe weekend. I'll look forward to talking to you soon.